Hi guys, thanks for visiting the channel. I'm Liz at Flippin' Lizzie. I'm a part-time vintage reseller in Maryland. And today I have a haul video for you. So buckle up for some fun finds and some very specific tips. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to give you guys a lot of information today about specific things that I've found in the last couple of days. So I hope you enjoy the video. Leave a comment, like the video, share the video, subscribe, all of that helps. And I do appreciate all of your support so far. Let's go check it out. So here we have most of the haul from, I guess the last two days. I have it all spread out in my dining room, so it's a little messy and luckily we have an eat-in kitchen. Um, some of these things I got at yard sales and some of them I got at a local estate sale. So I'll just walk you through them and tell you what I do know so far or you know what I've learned in the past and I'll even tell you if I don't know anything. Um, we're gonna start over here, I think actually, with this uh, wide-eyed, googly-eyed uh, bunny plush. And you know, he's very well loved, but people really have a lot of nostalgia for these pieces. He's actually really cute. And he's not very dirty or like gross. He's just a little bit discolored. I'm sure there's a way to clean them if someone wanted to do that. Anyway, I actually looked this up and this could sell for about $30, maybe a little bit more. And some of you know, I'm sure that if they have the rubber face, they can be worth much, much more, you know, around $100 or more. So you wanna look for those things. I actually don't get too many with the googly eyes, so he kind of stood out to me. Um, I've never seen this board game before, and because I've sold board games before that I had never seen, I knew to pick it up. This can retail for as much as $50. I haven't inspected my particular um, edition here to see if I have all the pieces and everything. You wanna check those things. It's a little bit time consuming, but sometimes you find the hidden treasure in these boxes. That has happened to me at least twice that I've found other valuable items inside a game box. So um, I'll save that story for another day because I have a lot to go through. Now I know I passed up a piece kind of like this, this sort of like 80s kitsch quilted folk art, but I have a lot of trouble passing up cat motif items. Cat people love more cats. I hope I'm not touching on a sensitive issue for any of you. Um, and so I, I couldn't resist. It's a, it needs a little cleanup. I think I can sell it locally or in the booth for probably $15 or maybe a little bit more. Um, there is a signature on the back. I don't think it's some very famous artist, uh, but I may try to interpret that and see, but it's really faded. So I don't think it would show up on the camera. I sort of cringe a little when I see this, I think it's pronounced Pimpernel uh, type coaster and placemat stuff because I remember this stuff. And sometimes when you remember it, it feels like it's not very good. <laughs> um, hello, acid wash jeans. Uh, but anyway, um, these appear to never have been used. And I know that these things are becoming popular again. Um, and I think this coaster set could bring um, probably like $25 online and less locally. Plus it's sort of a specialty item. So I'm not sure it's the type of thing I would sell locally. I always buy vintage playing cards. I actually use them in my other job as a, um, as a teacher, uh, but I just thought these were really cute and you never know what you might find in there. I love that this says us versus them. <laughs> uh, there's just a little bit of passive aggression there. Oh, but anyway, uh, these birds are gorgeous and if they are incomplete and I can't sell them and it would probably be something inexpensive, like $10 for this three decks, I can still use them. My friend also uses them as price tags. Hey, Susan, uh, in her antiques booth in Historic Ellicott City. So there's a way that we can upcycle them and keep them out of the uh, landfill um, and give them to someone maybe who collects them. I knew as soon as I saw these that um, I had to grab them. They are both chipped. I actually think the seller may have given these to me, to me for free. I was a little heartbroken. I didn't recognize this name. Let me just grab, let me look at this. It's Porsgrund. Uh, it's from Norway and you can kind of tell it's got this Viking motif. You can tell it's got that mid-century modern look. Um, these are either trinket dishes or coasters. I think I did look them online, looked them up online and they were advertised as coasters um, and they were $50 each if they weren't chipped. But I thought they were worth showing to you 
because I did have some luck recently with some mid-century coasters. Um, Fornicetti is the name of that artist, and they sold for about, it was well over $100 for a set of Fornicetti coasters I sold on Etsy. So even though many people um, laugh at coaster people like myself, they can be valuable and make you some money, so there's nothing to laugh about there. I didn't actually remember to look these up. Now, I don't know if these have a great amount of value, these flower place card holders, but they have the sweetest graphics. They are so adorable. Look at these. Oh, sorry, I wasn't doing a very good job letting you look. I was too busy looking. They're all different flowers, and I love when things have their original box. I don't know if those were ever used, so I'll have to look those up. Made in Japan is really good for us right now as resellers. So, you know, if you have an original box, a lot of estate sales, I don't know how uh, experienced you guys are at estate sales, but a lot of estate sales, you're kind of filling a box or a bag and they eyeball the box or the bag and they give you a price. Now you do have to manage all of that volume, uh, but if it's a dollar for that and it's worth 10 or even probably more, then why not? Uh, my friends who know me know I like kind of weird things and my dad was a chemist for many years. So this kind of like, this is sort of like 80s kitsch too. This water chemistry plastic mug. It's got significant wear, but it's really cool. And I think I'll probably put it in my antiques booth for, you know, $10 or less in the place where I put apothecary type stuff for people who like oddities. Um, I forgot to look up this cat too. Gosh darn it, he's so cute too. I guess he's a little hard to see. This is like a little mail or bill organizer cat. He's got this sort of like abstract look, definitely sort of mid-century, maybe 1970s. And I can't resist the cat motif and I've never seen him before. My friends know that for some reason, I keep buying pepper grinders and wooden salt and pepper shakers and I keep finding these, which I identified a few weeks ago and I can't remember their name. Um, there's something twins, but anyway, I, I don't know what that is. Um, I think it comes from my mother. She had a pepper grinder collection. I blame her for that, but you know, there are worse things to get from your mother. Um, these do have some value. I didn't look them up because it's not probably significant unless there's something like Dansk. Um, Dansk salt and pepper shakers are very collectible and some are worth hundreds of dollars. So you should look for that name on the bottom. Don't turn up your nose at anything. This was the last day of this estate sale. It started Thursday and I could not go. So a lot of these things came from a place that had already allegedly been picked. So you can always find stuff. So that goes with that never stop searching. You know, that's not just a metaphor for life. Um, anyway, so this beautiful, I guess it would be like hand carved or turned. I don't know the verbiage to use, but is it verbiage or verbiage? Maybe one of you guys can let me know. I like to pronounce things correctly when I can, and I don't always. Um, this was a signed piece. It's vintage. It was really beautiful wood. I don't know if this is maybe maple. Uh, maybe it's birch. I don't know. My dad would know exactly what kind of wood this was by the color and the green. Um, but anyway, it's beautiful wood. That's how I'll identify it. Um, I did do a preliminary search for that um, artist, and I didn't get very far, but that's not something you would turn up for just a few dollars. Speaking of Dansk, I had never seen this ceramic fish gravy boat by them. It's about a $40 piece online. I got it the last day at an estate sale. I actually got that one last week and I was cleaning out the vintage van. And that's, I think I paid $4 the last day of the estate sale. But that, this beautiful piece had sat there. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use it for maple syrup and your kids would probably love pouring things out of it. But I'm sure there's a dance collector or a fish lover out there who's looking for something cute like that. I had never seen, well, maybe not since the 80s, um, the preppy yearbook before at a sale. I had to grab it. I was super into it. I couldn't believe it was still there. Um, and, you know, in the early 80s, I believe this book's from 81. That was really the style. And, you know, you wanted to learn how to be preppy. <laughs> so I looked this book up and I was surprised that the hardcover, which this is, retails for approximately $90 on Amazon. So that was a lucky find for the last day. I've got a couple of little play school puzzles here, which surprised me that they were $15 a piece. I have three of those. I love vintage ski stuff. 
I don't know if it's because of the movie Better Off Dead. Uh, my husband used to um, be a ski instructor. I don't know what it is. I can't say I was ever a great skier. I started young and was an eternal beginner. But I just, I like goggles in general and ski goggles are really cool. They're not in perfect condition, uh, but they're really cool. And I think they were about $30 online. Um, I have a couple things that don't have a super high value here. Um, this sort of celestial kind of Aztec ashtray, which could be used for your earrings or your rings by the sink, or maybe even your Brillo pad, depending on what you want. That's probably like a $15 item, maybe at the shop. And I always liked these when I was a kid for putting like your sponge by the sink. I'm sure there are lots of other uses. You could probably use it for a succulent or something. Um, he's in really good condition. I think he's a, um, a hobbyist piece. I think someone actually painted him and their initials are on the bottom. So he might be like a $10 item at the antique shop. I picked this up, it was so cute. I had to really clean it up. I haven't researched this little tile. You'd probably use it as a trivet or you could put it on the wall. It's, it's definitely kitsch, probably 70s, 80s type kitsch, but so cute and not very expensive. And so I figure for 10 bucks, protect your table from a hot pan, why not? Um, this was a more valuable item. And sometimes when I'm in the heat of the moment, you know, it's actually like a neurological thing that when you're in the heat of the moment, your decision maker like kind of shuts down. Um, and so I get really excited when I go to sales because it's so much fun to pick through everything and sort through everything and make all those choices. So I knew I wanted this, but I wasn't really processing what I was getting. A lot of these were made in Belgium. I don't think this one said where it was made, but these are worth pretty good money. Um, this one could be worth, I don't know, like 75 to 125. There were some lower comps, but I don't, they didn't seem to be the norm. Um, okay, so we have a couple of cool jars in the back. They have plastic lids. Look how the, sh the condition of the, I guess, enameling on these was actually really good. We got the Cracker Barrel and the cookie jar. Interestingly, the Cracker Barrel is worth less. Maybe people don't, maybe they identify with the company. I don't know. Um, and I think the the Cracker Barrel one was about 30 online, which was actually a little surprising to me. And the cookie jar was more like 60, so that was pretty cool. Um, I always pick up these metals. You don't always have to do what I do because they're really not worth that much, but they're so interesting. These were from the early 70s. Um, they do sometimes sell in the booth. People decorate like their military jackets with them or they upcycle them. Again, I was buying like a whole box of stuff for like, I don't know, $60 or something. So it doesn't hurt me to pick those up because I like them and I will get my money back. So there you go with that. Um, now this I kept in here because it was actually a mistake and I haven't found this exact piece online. Um, it's a really pretty, maybe like a, it kind of reminds me of a perfume bottle, but they usually have that, that ground edge inside for the stopper. Um, I haven't looked it up. Well, I tried to look it up. Uh, and I noticed it was the tiny flea bite when I got to the car. Actually, it's a little bigger. Maybe it's a tick bite along the edge. But I thought, well, that's not very bad. And then when I was examining it, because I wanted to look it up, there's like a huge, well, kind of huge hole in the side. And I thought it was a little bit rude of this woman who was sort of like a quasi antique dealer with very few items carefully curated at her yard sale to not mention to me that it was broken. I know... Normally at a yard sale, I wouldn't expect someone to say, that's as is, by the way. But this woman had a little bit of a different thing going on. And I was kind of surprised that she just didn't even happen to mention that. I only paid a few dollars for it. I thought it was beautiful. I can still put some like dry lavender in it and enjoy the pretty glass. Um, but glass like that can be collectible and valuable. Just you got to check it over carefully. Okay. Did I miss anything in this area? I don't think so. There is a piece in the back that I'll get to. I bought this Gans um, goblet. I thought it was really cool, kind of Picasso-esque, not valuable. So if it catches your eye, you can pick it up if it's cheap enough, which it was, but it might not always be valuable. In this case, of course, I didn't think I had a Picasso. That's my dream, of course, but um, I thought it was gonna be worth $20 or something, and I think it's worth like five. I will still make money. I just won't make as much. Um, this little um, planter is McCoy, I believe, maybe from the 1940s. I just love the frog motif. I don't know if I love frogs. I mean, kind of, but the motif is just, it just gets me every time. I also apparently love butter dishes because I keep buying them. This one happens to be like melamine 
or Melmac. I think it's, well, I can't remember. I think Melamine is a substance and Melmac might be a particular company that does it. But it's got this cute shape. It's nice and wide. Um, I forgot to look up the company on the bottom. I think it begins with a B and I don't know if it will be legible on camera for you guys. But I, oh, I can almost read it. I don't want to take the time to look it up. Most butter dishes aren't worth a lot, but people do like them. And they like really cool retro ones. So like at the booth, it would probably sell for 15, but I'll look it up because it could be worth more than that. I just, um, I'm not that fluent. I did skip over these little informal cards. I'm gonna show them to you quickly. Not very valuable most of the time. Although once I did get a set of cards and I think they were a famous artist. I don't remember who. And they were extremely valuable. And I believe I sold them to a friend. These just have this pretty fleur de -lis. I just thought they were really sweet. I'm always looking for notes to write teacher thank you notes, a thank you to a neighbor. Sometimes you're buying stuff for yourself to save yourself money. Because if I paid a dollar for that box, there's no way you would pay a dollar at even Target for that many note cards that you can use to write an excuse for your child's illness or write a, a neighbor a note. Um, now I wrote down how to pronounce this. I mispronounced it in a previous video which makes sense. I decoded it using what I know about English phonics or American English phonics. That did not work out. Now the name of this pottery, I believe, or the area in which it's made is spelled O-A-X-A-C-A, -A, I believe. I wrote it down. O-A-X-A-C-A. -A -A. I looked it up so we could all be informed. And I believe it's pronounced Oaxaca, which is so far from any intuitive pronunciation that I would have come up with. And I will probably not remember that, so forgive me for that. But um, this is black Mexican pottery. I'm actually sort of in love with this. It has like this almost like lava look to it. And look at this, like um, it's in relief, you know? It's just beautiful. And then there's texturing in between these petals. I haven't looked up the artist. It's stamped on the back. I'll show it to you because some of you might be nuts about pottery. Kind of looks like two little hoof prints there, but that could be to... Um, maybe to hang it. I'm not sure. And I don't know if that's the artist mark or not, but it's so beautiful. This pottery does sell well. Um, a lot of people like it. Mid-century people, um, studio pottery people, uh, bohemian types, they all like it. Um, something like that is probably, it could be anywhere from $40 to $100. I probably should have used Google Lens on it to find out about this particular one. I picked up this little, I guess it's like a little trivet. It's copper and wood. I'm not really sure what kind of pan it's for, but I just thought it was really cool. And I'm sure there's another use for it. You could put a bowl in it maybe and use it to transport the bowl and just kind of, I don't, I don't know if my bowls require decoration, but I'm all about it. I had to pick that up. Didn't look it up, don't know. I looked up these marionettes. I guess they're from Mexico. The creepy clown is even creepier because he's got issues. He's got, he had a bad nose job somewhere. That's not very nice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I would totally help you out if I could. But anyway, um, this guy's drinking. These are like, you know, souvenirs from Cancun, but they're really cute, vintage. Um, not super value, maybe $25 for the one that's in better condition. Um, I'll probably just put them in my booth because I don't know how well they'll travel. And this guy already has had a hard time traveling. Um, maybe he was drinking too and he fell. Maybe that's what happened. So they'll probably go in my booth. I kind of like some creepy stuff in my booth and they're a little creepy to me. I don't know, something about their expressions. Um, I always buy these wooden, uh, sorry about the mess in the background. I'm sorting everything out of the car. These wooden like letter boxes, they always sell because people like to corral their stuff. We all honestly have too much stuff and it's not even our fault. Not even non-picker types can corral and organize all their stuff the way they would like to. Um, and so people like to use those. And sometimes I put them in my booth uh, so that I can corral smalls and people seem to like to dig through them. So I always pick those up. I don't wanna forget this piece of art. I don't know anything about it yet. Uh, it is, um, how do I word this? Like a limited edition, probably a serograph or serigraph, um, serigraph. I don't know how to pronounce that either. I see so many words, but I don't hear them pronounced. And it's like a TV dinner, like a Swanson TV dinner. It kind of has like a Warhol vibe. I can't read the signature. I wonder if I can even show you guys what it looks like. I thought maybe it said Jim Gordon. 
If you guys know anything about this, please give me a comment below because I'm at a loss and I feel like it could be kind of valuable. So I don't have a comp for that because I have no clue. These Looney Tunes glasses are not as popular as they used to be. Um, they go for about $10 a piece, but these are from 1973 and they are in really good condition. I think they were just stored on a shelf. Um, yeah, they used to be 1973. Oh, I guess Warner Brothers, but yeah, I guess some of them are Looney Tunes. I'm not as familiar with that as some people. Okay, we're getting to the end of the table at least. Floral frogs we've talked about before. People use them for other things, although these are probably better for actual uh, floral arrangements. I picked up a little cage bell. I didn't look that up yet, but look how sweet it is. People do really like these bells. Um, and there were a couple of pieces of jewelry. This guy got flipped over. Look at this little wire owl. Isn't he amazing? So cute. A little bit brutalist, you know, and I think people really like to wear something that no one else has. I know I'm like that. So I don't know if I'll put him online because, you know, he's not a precious metal. So maybe he's like a $25 piece or maybe I'll put him in the booth for like about half of that. Um, I picked this piece for our haul because it is signed MD, um, but I don't know who that jewelry designer is. I'm not familiar with that, but I think it might be from the 80s based on a little bit of um, research I did and it's really sparkly. If someone could tell me what this is, it looks really familiar. It's from the World's Fair. It reminds me of like a stamp dispenser, but I don't know, like I'm having a, a problem. Maybe, is it part of a buckle? I know, you guys probably think I'm crazy right now. I kind of think I might be crazy because I don't know what that is, but I liked it. So it came home with me in the bag. Mixed metals, I still pick those up no matter what they are, whether it's, you know, a pot, um, some kind of like brutalist sculpture. Um, I haven't really looked anything up like this. This could be 80s or it could be 60s. I'm not 100% sure. I gotta look at this, the construction. More like religious, sort of a little bit kitschy. I feel like I said it's a pendant. This pretty little like maybe cloisonne or enamel ring. It, this one didn't have a signature, but there are some that are signed that have good value. And I have some books too, and I have some clothes on the floor, so I'm gonna go a little faster, hopefully. I buy a lot of old books and these were the these were there the last day of the estate sale. This one's worth over a hundred dollars. It's from 1895. I will admit that often I bring an antique book home. It looks amazing. It's got this kind of look. I feel like I'm really feeling the vibe and I get it home and it's worth eight or ten dollars. I put it in my booth because I probably didn't pay much for it. You might not choose to do that. You might say I don't want to spend a dollar on a book spend $2 worth of time and get, make $5 on it. I can't pass these things up. And when there are other pickers in the room and it's like that feeding frenzy vibe, I think it's worth it. Um, and I decorate sometimes with old books because I think they're cool. I put this in here because the Mother West Wind books, which I think these are from like, maybe like the 30s or 40s. I did have the date written down somewhere. The when books, the when stories are worth a lot more than the where stories. But when I looked this up, there were comps from 25 to like 125. So the jury's still out on this. But it's safe to say if you see these antique books, they have really cute graphics and actually the stories are really cute. Um, yeah, I did find one on Etsy for $130. So I have to investigate that more. I have a couple of books here that I think my friend Ron um, locally might be interested in. He does genealogy. And he likes to know a lot about the area. He has a huge library of books that help him know about the region that people are from. Um, these might not be up his alley, but I'm gonna run those by him. I did look these up. Um, they both had significant value. This one ranged from 65 to 125. It's from 1929. It's not perfect condition. Condition's really important with books. Um, this one has a little imperfection here, but also had a high value. I wanna say it was about 100 as well. Wizard of Oz is just always a winner, especially vintage, like these graphics. They got that kind of creepy, cool vibe that I like so much, so I had to get those. I'm gonna give you a quick look at some of the clothing, which is on the floor right now, which seems wrong, but they had some cool stuff at this sale, and I don't have a big enough table. So it's spread out. I'm gonna clean it up, check it out, scope it out. We got a paisley skirt here. I just feel like this could be super cute. And actually it would look really cute with that vest. 
Look at the stripes on this. I have not looked this up yet, so I'm not sure how vintage it is, but it has a penguin on it. And I'm pretty sure my seventh grade science teacher, Mr. Antisico, used to wear these shirts. Sometimes it's weird how the brain works. Okay, I think I have a couple of those. Look at this velour v-neck. I mean, that's fire. Love it. Color block. Gorgeous. These colors, these jewel tones together. Amazing. A lot of this stuff will go in my booth, and I would not normally have this stuff thrown on the floor. But I do need to wash it uh, if it's washable, clean it up or whatever. And so, yeah, that's where it is. Look at this t-shirt. It's got to be single stitch, right? And those of you who don't do vintage clothing, you look for the single stitch. That's a sign that it is vintage. The term yuppie is pretty old. And you can see it needs to be washed, which it will be. So I got that. I thought this was really cool. I have a friend who's from this town. Well, a town by this name. And I was like, oh man, I love jackets like that. Like an old fashioned windbreaker. And this person was like, I, part of the rescue squad? How cool is that? Super cool. I got some vintage jeans. These are kind of back in style. At least that's what the, the people I watch on YouTube have told me. You know, these wide leg distressed. Um, these are Ralph Lauren and these are old rye. I didn't look these up yet because I wasn't sure I was going to include this stuff in the haul, but why not? Um, this cute little cardigan, super sweet. Haven't looked up the America's Cup jacket, but you know, I am from New England and it was a big deal up there. So I figured I would check it out. And there was another vintage reseller at that estate sale. And she goes, Oh, I looked at that sweater, but it's not vintage. And you know, I'm allowed to sell non-vintage things in my booth and this color blocking with dogs, amazing. This is Northern Isles, haven't looked it up. Again, I was pricing, well, I was buying stuff based on the fact that I was getting a whole haul for $60. So I think I covered everything and gave you guys a couple of tips. Um, leave a comment down below. I love when you share, uh, like and subscribe. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys next time. I really wanted to do this haul right away. Um, I felt like we had some important pieces that were worth mentioning, and I really wanted to share that with you guys so that you could find some really cool stuff and pay yourself for, for your hunting adventure. So I will see you guys soon. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. The channel is growing, and I have you to thank. I'll see you next time. Hey, don't forget, never stop searching.